All right, in this lesson, we're going to do a systematic treatment of equilibrium. And this question comes from Rama. So everybody say, thank you, Rama, here. So we're going to deal with the solubility of zinc cyanide, but not in pure water. We're going to be at a pH of 1.5. And so the problem is that when zinc cyanide dissociates, you get zinc and cyanide ions, but cyanide is a base and it can react with water to form HCN. And whether I've got a KB for cyanide, but more likely we've just got the KA for hydrocyanic acid here, uh, we've got competing equilibria or multiple equilibria interacting here. And a simple ice table or something is not gonna get the job done here. So with the systematic treatment of equilibrium, so there's a standard method you kind of follow here. And so first thing you wanna do is write out all your equilibria and their corresponding equilibrium constant expressions. So we've done that here. And one thing you should always keep a note, uh, you're almost always doing this with aqueous equilibrium and an aqueous solution. You've always got the auto ionization of water. And whether you write it with water dissociating to have H plus and OH minus or two waters giving H3O plus and OH minus, same diff. So but you should always include that uh, somewhere along the way. Cool. And then you're going to have what's called the charge balance or the mass balance. Now, one thing to note with your equilibrium constant expressions, if you want to account for non-ideality and start using activities here, that's on you. I'm not going to do that in this lesson. So we're going to leave the simplistic. So, but that is a possibility if you're getting a, uh, you know, non-ideality and trying to get a more precise answer and stuff. So, but here I'm going to totally ignore any kind of non-ideality. All right. So but we need a charge balance and a mass balance. Now charge balance just says that all the positives equal all the negatives in your solution. And so you're going to put all the positive ions on one side. And so in all our different equilibria, we see we've got zinc ions as a positive ion. And we see we've got H plus or H3O plus. I'm just going to write it as H plus here. Cool. And those have to be balanced out perfectly by all the negative ions. And in this case, we've got cyanide and hydroxide present. But we're not quite finished here. So if anything has either uh, anything other than a plus one or minus one charge, you've got to factor that in. So in this case, the zinc here is plus two and we'll factor that in. So think about it for a second. Let's just say that there was just zinc and cyanide. Those are the only two ions present. Well, for the charges to be balanced, if these were just equal, well, there'd be more positives than negatives because zinc is plus two and cyanide is only minus one. And so to account for that, we'd have to put a two in front of there. So again, assuming that those are the only ions present, now I could say that the cyanide would be equal to double the zinc concentration to make the charges equal. So it seems a little backwards sometimes for students to put the two over here instead of the two over here. But again, this would essentially say that cyanide equals double the zinc concentration, which is again, what would have to hold true. But in this case, even with other ions present, we still account for it that way. So if you have a plus two ion or minus two ion, put a two in front of it. If you got a plus three or minus three, put a three in front of it in your charge balance expression. Cool. Now this technically looks like it's our charge balance expression, but we have to account for one thing. And this is super, super tricky, but we're at pH 1.5. And so the question is, well, how do we get to pH 1.5? Well, obviously somebody dumped a bunch of acid in there, or maybe we've somehow magically got a buffer at pH 1.5. I don't know, but somehow we're at pH 1.5. I'd get there probably by adding a bunch of hydrochloric acid or something, but that means in addition to this H plus, there's some sort of conjugate base or something going on. And so we're not quite finished with our charge balance. And the problem is I don't know what else goes in there. So I actually can't get a complete charge balance in this example. So, and this happens sometimes in such situations. So no big deal. Well, let's move on to the mass balance here. And the mass balance just simply accounts for the fact that whatever you stuck in your solution is all that's there and you'll count for all of it. And so in this case, so the zinc cyanide, the only place the zinc ions and the cyanides ions come from is from the zinc cyanide that dissociates. They don't come from any other equilibrium in here whatsoever. So the cyanide's not coming from HCN because we didn't stick any HCN in the solution. Now some forms in the solution from the cyanide that came from the zinc cyanide, but the zinc and the cyanide come from nowhere else. And that's, what's going to be kind of the focus of our mass balance here. And so in this case, we could say that the zinc, there's a relationship between the zinc concentration and the cyanide concentration. So in this case, I can see that for every zinc, you get twice as many cyanides. So we could say that the cyanide concentration is double the zinc concentration. And if there were no other equilibrium besides that first one, this would hold true. And this is, you know, something we would have said with an ice table or something like that. So, but what I'm going to write here is I'm going to write total 
for both of these. And that total accounts for the fact that one of these might have been converted or both of them into other forms. So are there any other forms of zinc in the solution? So no, I mean, there's zinc cyanide solid, but that's not in the solution. And so this is the only one. So zinc two plus total is just simply the zinc two plus. But for the cyanide, some of that cyanide gets converted into HCN when it reacts with water. And so the cyanide, you know, if I start out with 10 cyanides, if eight of them react to form HCN, then I only have two of these left, but I'd have now eight HCNs and I'd still have a total of 10 CN minuses and HCNs total. So those are the two forms that can exist. And so the CN minus total is the combination in this case of both CN minus and HCN, the two different forms that cyanide is going to be existing in, in that solution. And now this is an accurate mass balance. Cool. So now we've got to decide what it is we're solving for. And in this case, we're looking for the molar solubility of zinc cyanide at pH 1.5. And so in this case, well, what is that molar solubility? Well, in this case, molar solubility, if you were setting up an ice chart and this was the only equilibrium, you would have had like a plus X here and a plus two X here where X was that molar solubility. And so what's nice here is that for every one of these that associates, you get a zinc and that nothing else happens to that zinc. And so the concentration of zinc, since it's one to one with the solid is going to be equal to the molar solubility. Now, with the cyanide, because you know, for every one of these, we get twice as much cyanide, and then some of that cyanide interacts with water or the acidic solution to become HCN, we can't really form a relationship with the cyanide and the molar solubility. But in this case, the zinc ion concentration is the molar solubility. And at the end of the day, that's what we're gonna be trying to solve for. Now, a couple other things that we know. We're given that the pH is 1.5, and that's pretty convenient. So we'll just write out what that implies, that the H plus concentration is 10 to the negative. 1.5. So, and that the OH minus concentration is 10 to the negative 12.5. Don't forget that these two have to multiply to give 1 times 10 minus 14. Since the pH was given, we know the H plus. They're just in a function of each other. And since we have the KW value, we can figure out the hydroxide as well. And so typically everywhere you know these, I would just you know write them right above and stuff like that. So in this case, I'm not going to worry about the charge balance. We're not going to be able to use it since it was incomplete. It's not going to be useful to us. So, but we do know that H plus concentration right here is 10 to the negative 1.5. So, and the only place the hydroxide showed up was in our charge balance. So we're just going to leave it alone. Cool. So in this case, can we solve for that zinc ion concentration? Well, the only equation it shows up in is this one. And so first thing I'm gonna do is just set up solvent for that zinc two plus concentration. And so here's zinc two plus is gonna equal your KSP of 3.0 times 10 to the negative 16 all over the cyanide concentration squared. So if we know the cyanide concentration, we could plug it in here and solve for the zinc. It's essentially the goal we're getting, but obviously we don't know the cyanide, but we're gonna figure out how to get the cyanide in terms of the zinc ion concentration through our other equations here. Uh, so in this case, there is a connection between now cyanide and HCN, and those are the only two variables left in this equation. So and in this one here, there's zinc, cyanide, and HCN, there's all of them combined. And so now we're at the stage where we've got to make some assumptions. So we know the pH is 1.5 and that's significant. So when you're dealing with an acid base equilibrium here and you're given a Ka or a Kb, in this case Ka, so you can usually make a determination which of the species predominates. In this case, either HCN or CN minus. Well, if you take the negative log of that Ka, 6.2 times the negative 10, you're gonna get about 9.2. That's a pKa. And if you recall from the henderson hasselbach equation, when your pH equals your pKa, you have equal amounts of conjugate acid and conjugate base. Well, we're not at pH 9.2, we're at pH 1.5. As the pH goes down, you get more and more of the acid form predominating. So as the pH gets more acidic, more of the acid form predominating. So, and it turns out every pH unit's a power of 10. So at pH 9.2, they're equal. At pH 8.2, that would mean 10 times more HCN. At pH 7.2, that would mean 100 times more HCN. At pH 6.2, that would mean 1,000 times more HCN. At pH 1.5, that's gonna be almost 10 to the eighth times more HCN, like a huge amount more, somewhere between a million and 10 million times more HCN. It's huge. And so when I look at these two added together, I'm adding a much bigger number to a number that's almost 10 million times smaller. And we're just gonna say, yeah, he's so small that we'll just ignore him. Only because they're being added together. Notice when they're multiplied or divided, I can't ignore that. So 
adding or dividing, you know, I'm sorry, multiplying or dividing by a small number has a huge impact on your equation. But adding a much smaller number, who cares? It's kind of like saying, you know, uh, if I gave Bill Gates a dollar, would he care? No, would he notice? No, because it's insignificant compared to his net worth. All right. So, but this makes an interesting relationship now between HCN and the zinc concentration. And we can kind of see this taking shape now. So in this case, I need to know the cyanide concentration in order to solve for zinc, the only place I can solve for zinc. So, but the cyanide I can see can be related to the HCN concentration here. We can come up with another equation. And then the HCN can be related back to the zinc and it's starting to take shape here. So let's go back over here and solve for the uh, cyanide concentration there in terms of HCN. So in that case, you're going to have, uh, we'll do it right here. So let's pull out the calculator to give us a little help. So I'm going to move the HCN over and then also move, divide by 10 to the negative 1.5. So in this case, 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10 divided by 10 to the negative 1.5 gives me 1.96 times 10 to the negative eight. And so we just found out that our cyanide is equal to 1.96 times 10 to the negative eight times the HCN concentration once you move it over. Cool. So I guess I should have done this the other way around because maybe I actually wanted that HCN concentration instead uh, the other way around. So yeah, actually, so we wanted actually HCN equal to and divide that through. <laughs> Uh, let's see, so one divided by that last answer gets us uh, 5.1 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, 5.1 times 10 to the seventh. Cool, and I'm gonna substitute that in right here. And so we're gonna end up with two times our zinc two plus concentration equals, so instead of HCN, I'm gonna write 5.1 times 10 to the seventh times CN minus. And now I've got a relationship between zinc and cyanide. I'll solve for the cyanide, plug it right back in here so we can solve for the zinc. So we'll take two, divide it by that last number. And uh, by the way, I'm rounding these to a couple decimals. I'm carrying all the decimals here from the calculator. So two divided by that last answer is 3.92 times 10 to the negative eight. Times that zinc concentration. And that, let's make sure that looks like an eight first off. So, and this is what we're actually going to substitute all the way back here for our cyanide and then solve. And so here we'll have the zinc ion concentration equals 3.0 times 10 to the negative 16 all over 3.92 times 10 to the negative 8 times our zinc 2 plus concentration as well. And so in this case, I'm going to square the zinc two plus concentration and bring it up to the other side. And we're going to end up with zinc two plus cubed. So, and then I'm gonna have three times 10 to the negative 16 divided by 3.92 times 10 to the negative eight squared on the other side. So in this case, three times 10 to the negative 16 divided by my last answer squared gets me 0.195, does that seem right? Yeah, so 0.195-ish. And then we'll take the cube root to get that zinc concentration. And my calculator, that means I'm gonna take it, that last answer raised to the one third power. And that gets me 0.57999, so I guess I'm gonna round that to 0 0.58 molar. Cool, and as we said at the very beginning, the concentration of zinc was our molar solubility. 
Cool, but now that we had the zinc concentration, if the question was, you know, find one of the other variables, we could go back and say, well, now that we know the zinc, we could find the HCN concentration. And then once we knew the HCN concentration, we could use that to find the cyanide concentration. And we could determine all the species in the solution, all except the mystery one <laughs> that's in there that allowed us to get down to a pH of 1.5 anyways, but all the rest of them, we could figure out at this point. That is uh, your systematic way of treating multiple equilibria here.